<clears throat> Twitch, what's up, man? Shout out to the chat, everybody that's in the chat, everybody that's watching on YouTube, man. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please comment on what's your favorite segment of this show and what segments you want to see going forward, man. Uh, last week, we talked a lot about the club championship. We had Pavin on the show. Appreciate him coming out for that, man, because that meant a lot, you know, just talking to him and picking his mind to see what went through his mind winning that huge club championship, man. It was the biggest tournament of the year. 70% of all the money in the MCS is gone, probably more than that because the Madden Challenge money is gone or the Madden Classic money is gone and the Club Series money is gone. So that's probably about 80% of the money. All of that is gone. So that's definitely a, a, a huge loss. As far as money is, there's not that much more money to make, but there's definitely two more belts to win. And we'll definitely talk about the D.C. a little bit coming out here. But first, I want to talk about something that, that, you know, I did this week that uh, is big for the future of my business and Madden. Because, I mean, once I won the Madden Bowl in, in Madden 17, you know, I really just focused a lot getting all my my time and all my energy into um, into Madden and trying to grow my business and trying to make this a career. And uh, I've done everything I could as far as putting my money, putting my time, putting my energy into that, into making Madden as best it can for me and as best it can for you guys. Because at the end of the day, I don't make any money and I don't have any success without you guys watching, man. And, and last year, Madden 17, obviously, I had a great year. Madden 18, I felt like I really established my business. I established, you know, what I wanted to do with my brand. Had a successful year. I didn't win any belts, but I had a successful year. And then Madden 19... Obviously, the year is different than any other one for what happened. But uh, just seeing where it's going and what I needed to do to grow my business to the next level. I mean, seeing Skimbo go out there and he he went with this uh, huge company and everything. And, and it really notified me that I got to improve my business. I got to get this to another level. And, I mean, I see a lot of man players around and I really see uh, – a lot of streamers, a lot of YouTube guys, and a lot of talented man players in the world. And, I mean, I'm really not impressed by anybody. It really takes a lot for me to really say this guy, you know, got what it takes to take this game to the next level between Twitch, between YouTube, and even between the MCS. And it takes a lot for me to really respect somebody else's grind and see somebody that's compatible with me as far as wanting to grow, wanting to make money, and wanting to win. I mean, that's really a big deal at the end of the day. And for me, for my business, what I want to do is just add somebody to my team, add somebody to my esports team that essentially is going to continue to grow and grow and grow throughout the years. And and the only person to me that one grinds this, grinds the content and is uh, you know one of the top players in the world is my guy Clef, and that's who I decided to try to really recruit to my team. And we came to an agreement that he would represent Nita Gaming and really become somebody else that's in my corner, in my camp, and I really uh, want to appreciate Clef for joining the squad, and I brought him on the podcast here to really talk about our future, what we're going to do, talk about a couple games uh, that he played and really his future this year in Mad 19, and from here on out. And so, Clef, I appreciate you joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. So so talk about essentially what uh, – what your goal is not only this year in Madden, but for the rest of your career, man. Like, what's the what's the thought process? The thought process now is just to, to keep growing and keep not just growing through the MCS, but off the MCS as well. Having having multiple incomes and grinding the game in multiple ways, not just not doing it one way because that's the way everybody else is doing it different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, and, and we'll talk about. What and one thing that I, I feel like you bring is a personality, obviously, excitement, obviously, energy. And talk about what separates you from any other regular man player. I think just the passion the mm -hmm. passion for the game and the passion to compete and just the love and the will to compete and just want to win so bad. Like, I, I really love to do this. And about the money, I've been playing Madden for day, like 10 years plus. Like, I just I love to do this. Like, this is what I love to do. A lot of people do this just because it's cool to do or maybe just because everybody else do it. That's not why I do it. I really love this. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, essentially, I think that's what makes anybody good at what, any craft that they take on. You really got to have the passion for it, and you got to want to succeed at it. You know, it's not necessarily just I'm going to wake up every day and make a little bit of money. No, you want to succeed whether you're making money at it or not. It has to be a passion of your life, not only, you know, for work, but also for, you know, what you want to do without making money, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
All right, man. So, so what? What's some of the like I said? What, what's some of the main goals you set out yourself? Not only, I mean, obviously you've had a pretty successful year so far, but I mean we're probably halfway through the year, definitely halfway through the MCS year. What's some other goals you set out for yourself for the rest of Mad Nineteen? I want to win a belt. That's gonna be the first, the first priority. Like I, I want to win a belt. Like that, that's the biggest thing for me is to win a belt. Mm-hmm. So everything else after that kind of falls in line. You got to have major goals and then minor goals. But that right now, that, that's all I'm really thinking about is winning a like a growing needed game and mm-hmm. growing your brand, growing my, you know what I'm saying, putting on for my area. For sure. That's that's really, that's really the, the major goals and the minor goals. For sure, definitely. I mean, uh, like I said, we're getting into – I want to go back to a couple of the games, and we, we're going to start with the, with the Mo game. We talked about this last week, obviously. We definitely talked about it. And uh, as I just want to hear some of – I, I don't know if you watched how I aired you out because I thought you did some some amateur shit down here towards the end. You know, but I want – first of all, before I start this Mo game, I want to take your, your main thought you took from this Mo game, both start before the game started and after the game started. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, like, what what was your thought process going into this game? Obviously, I mean, I, I've said on this podcast a million times that Mo is a top five man player. So, what is your mindset going into this game? Going into this game, I'm really I'm really pissed off, to be honest with you, because I hear all the talk, you know what I'm saying? I hear the disrespect on my neck. Like, people acting like, first of all, people just act like, oh, Clef don't play mad and all. He really don't. That, that was so far from the truth. And then, honestly, so Mo is a great player. Top five man. Dude is a hell of a competitor. But, mm-hmm. like, the disrespect that was going around my name, like, I'm not one of the best this year. With, with. So, I just want – I really want to prove everybody wrong. That really was my mindset. Like, yeah. I knew it was no pressure on me because everybody expected me to lose. They thought he couldn't do it on the big stage. So, it really put a chip on my – Okay. Okay. So, like, going into the Mo game, what, do you, what were you prepared for? Because I had – you know, I watched you play Mo a bunch – both last year and this year. So what was different from going into this game as opposed to all the other games y'all played? Just, I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to run at first. Mm-hmm. And then, so I really didn't prepare for anything besides I knew he'd probably be in a bunch because I watched a little, a tiny bit while I was playing out in Vegas. So I knew he was going to be in a bunch. And then once I saw his team, I seen it look just like Kiv team looked. Yeah. So I was like, okay, man, I'm going to just remember what Kiv did and I'm just going to, so that's what I did. I just, just remembered all Kiv tendencies while I was playing Mo, and I, that's how I kind of keyed in and, and stopped him for most. Okay. Now, now I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the end of the not the overtime. Uh, where do I want to talk about? Not there. Yes, this is when you got the ball back because this is like. This is a lot. I mean, obviously, is a. Uh, a question that we talk about a lot for a, a lot of players, and you've been, and we've all been in this situation a million times. Is that I got the ball back, I got to get one first down, and the game's over. So, right. like, regardless of who you're playing, what's like your main philosophy in that situation? Like, like you got the ball back, he got three timeouts, but I got to run a clock out. Like, what's my philosophy? Philosophy here is is really just by any means get a first down, however I can. Get one like I just like by any means if I need to pass I'm gonna pass if I need to run I'm gonna run I know Mo and I played Mo so much I knew he was gonna get that's why I was aggressive and pass I just I just had some unfortunate drops and I made the last play to Shannon Sharp was just a bad throw I should have just ate that one and, and played on four now now when you get the ball back here is this four down territory no matter what oh most definitely it's most definitely four down territory I'd rather give him the ball right there with especially it would have been fourth and two. I mean, I, I would definitely go for that. I'd rather try to win the game than lose the game. That's always my mindset. Try to win the game rather than trying not to. You know what I'm saying? Trying to. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. And and, and the first pass you go here, you throw, and you get a, a completion. So you get second and two, which is, like, ideal. Like, you take that. I mean, you would have signed up for that from the beginning, second and two, because then you got you got three plays to get two yards. It's pretty much what, right. what you want. Now, uh, now, the second play is the one where you drew up. Which was the bomb. Now, I, this is the Clef special, just pass sale. I'm assuming with with. It, I don't know if you ever hits, but you would just want to drag and you quick snapped him, and boom, right. You had the touchdown. And like I said, uh, Tyreek Hill definitely dropped it. But that's, I mean, that's 
that happens from time to time, and it happened to you twice in this tournament. That was like like a five percent chance that he drops it, but he dropped it. So talk, right, talk, just, yeah, talk about like what what went through your mind after that play. Like obviously stuff like that happens to all of us, but what what's the the mindset? Ooh, honestly, it was like man, it kind of that kind of deflated me. You could tell by my reaction. I was like, wow. I probably spent a, a little too much time on that play. I probably should have just wiped it off and just let it go. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'm like, okay, relax. You got two plays to get two yards. It's really simple. Mm-hmm. And I kind of – I feel like I pressed on third down. The one to start, like I said, I shouldn't have thrown that. I should have just took – either take the sack or throw it away and live to play fourth down. But it kind of – it did deflate me. Like you said, I had a lot of rookie mistakes in this tournament. I, I did. A lot of things should have lost me games. I was fortunate to win a few games. I'm, I'm talented, but that's not always going to get you to where you want to be at. No, for sure. Of course not. I mean, and like you said, I mean, I'm not – I'm not. I've never met none of these play calls because I, I love when somebody go to win the game because, I, you know, anybody could go out there, run the ball three times, and punt the ball. But uh, the last thing I want to know right. is uh, – Going after Mo gets this too. All right, now you, this uh, no more amateur stuff that you did was come out and field goal block here, so you had to go off sides and give him a free yard. Right. So that see that, that was dumb. Yeah, it was very dumb. That was dumb. That was off tilt. That was just off tilt, off shock. I'm like, wow. And you There's a chance I could lose this game because of what I did. Yeah, and it's definitely you can't use a timeout there, so that's all you could do is just go off sides and like. It, it just sucks, but that's that's pretty much why right. he got the two point because you know people don't really have two point play. He probably was just gonna chuck the ball up and uh, you know, try to catch a curl or something. Oh yeah, like it's that, definitely you know? gonna be a hot pass. Oh yeah, it ain't like he really had nobody really has dots down there for a long time. Right. But uh, let's talk about okay. So you give up that two point convert. You're down three points. You have 16 seconds left. Talk about what you want to do before that, and or uh, going into this drive and or what you're trying to get done now. Right. All right. So first play, I'm thinking, hey, let's. Let's get 10 yards. It don't matter if I'm in it. Getting out of bounds would be cool, but I got two timeouts. So I got – I have enough time. I just need a chunk play. Mm-hmm. So I figured he was going – he ran the same adjustments all game. So I'm like, like okay, I'm just going to run the play with most – uh, I'm going to look for most quick. Found yeah. quick. Luckily, he didn't click on, so I got the spin. I spun I spun out, I think, Lattimore, and then I picked up 25 yards. Once I got that, I knew I – I was gonna get the. I was. I knew I was gonna kick the field goal, and I knew we were going to overtime. Yeah. Once you got the big play. Yeah. Once you got to the fifty, it's like there's so many options for you to get that extra 10, 12 yards to get in the field goal range. Really, like you a corner route, you can go back to the same play. And uh, I mean, like I said, Mo was lurking that whole corner side to not let you throw the flat pass or the deep corner route, and just left the whole middle of the field wide open. And you as a man player, man, if you're gonna let the computer guard the middle of the field, it's gonna be fairly easy for anybody to you know get these yards. Exactly. Yeah. So that, like I said, I said on the podcast last week that those are probably if Mo had to get back two plays in his whole life, it's probably those two pass plays defensively, man, because like. We talk about Mo being good. He, he's good because of his defense, honestly, since the beginning right. of Madden. And not those those two plays were like, you know, yeah. they, they were pretty much decisions for him to play defense. Like, right. And you made an ice kick to go into overtime. I guess it wasn't right. far. And you got a nice little 38-yard, 37-yarder. That's that, that's the Yeah. Now, I have to hit a 54, 53 ice, you know what I'm saying? That would have been yeah, crazy. That would have been a little rough. Now, now, the one thing about this, no matter what happens in the game, you had you got the ball in overtime, and this was probably your best drive of the whole tournament, really. Mm-hmm. So talk about what this drive was about and, and pretty much what your mindset was after getting that field goal. After getting that field goal, you pretty much have a lot of momentum because it's like you lost all the momentum, but then it's like, all right, I got it back now. Now it's my game, you know? Right. Basically, once I knew I was getting the ball back, I knew the game was over. I, I knew my – I'm going in this game. Three was never an option. Uh, like a field goal was never an option. I'm thinking, okay, let me get back to what I was doing earlier in the game. Let me settle down and let me be. I got simple. Like I ran. I was running the same plays over and over again, forcing him to. Adjust. So that that was my mindset. Just be simple. Take your time. You got all the time, mm-hmm. and let's end this game right here. Yeah, who must? I mean, and then I mean, you, you gotta take your your chunks, your, these drags, everything like that. But then once you get a little bit closer, that's when you start looking looking for. All right, one is harder to score the closer you get. You know, that's definitely a, a, a 
obviously, if I'm Mo, it's like, all right, you driving down the field, but now you're at the 20. Now I got to, like, kind of do my best to hold you to a field goal. And talk about this this last play where you actually threw the touchdown over here to uh, Randy Moss, I believe. Right. So, I seen I, – like I said, I played most so many times, so I know I know pretty much all his tendencies. I knew he was gonna get wild and cross, man. But the way this game works, if you do get there late on the egg, it's a, it's pretty much a catch oh, every yeah, time, especially in the end zone. Right. So I seen I had streak on the field, just knowing okay he's gonna get wild. So once I seen him, he was basically I just I high passed it and mm-hmm. I seen Moss get the animation and I just it was, it was a crazy feeling. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, and that's where another thing about Mo, like, once I got this close to the end zone, I'm pretty much playing, like, Ben, but don't break. I wouldn't have got crazy. And right. And crazy adjustments because it's like, it's, I mean, you can't do nothing down the field. You got to go ahead and, and lock in and hold, and what you call right. and hold, uh, or try to hold in the three as best as possible. But that was definitely, I, like I said, that was the game of the tournament for me. Right. Definitely, hell, it definitely lived up, like, it lived up to all the, you know what I'm saying, the expectations. That's what felt so good about if I would have won the game like 19-7 to 7 how it was, it would have felt good. But just the way the game went, the fight back, it just felt great. Oh, yeah, for and sure. We put on a show. Oh, yeah, it's always better to win a, a, a tight game. I don't think I ever blew anybody out at any live event. I don't know, ever. But So, I don't know what that's like. All my games, are I've, I had to fight back and get some right. fluky. But that was a big game. But then the next game I want to talk about is the Manu game. That was definitely uh, – one, I thought this was a game where you got super lucky – and, and as yeah. much as we talk about Manu is probably one of the best players that hasn't really made a deep run in one of these tournaments. And, uh, I mean, his Leonard Fournette, I felt like his Leonard Fournette laid down not only the fumble, <laughs> but he had he had the ball inside the five-yard line twice in the first half and just could not get – it's not that he couldn't get in. He just couldn't fight at all. Like, he couldn't get yeah. – like, you know how you know how Leonard Fournette, all these running backs be fighting. He ain't get no type of fight, man. And I felt like between I, I felt like he he this first half could have been fourteen nothing real quick honestly. Oh, oh most definitely. The, I, I'll say this. I had I had some lucky play the kick return. I will say this. I don't feel like I got lucky on the fumble because he was on egg and he's playing right into. Tainan, so I, he I just ran. Like I, nah, I, or he, mm, yeah. did he not spin? Or did nah, he, he just he run right do into the he, Yeah, that's the thing. He ain't do nothing. He yeah. just like stood there and just pop. Yeah. So I played terrible. Like that's what, and that's a, it. Gave me a lot of confidence winning that game because I'm like, okay, I can't play no worse than this offensively. Like, it was really uncared. So it gave that game gave me a lot of confidence. And like I said, I felt lucky to survive that because, like you, I, I know I played bad. I said that right after the game. I told him I got lucky. No, for sure. I'm but right. I will say the defense did show up to play though. The, the, the boys, the boys showed up to play. I don't know. I don't know if they showed up to play. The boy showed up the flip. Because he was bad. He was no, bad. He wasn't bad. You let him throw this, this streak down the middle of the field like seven times. He got the hot bat. But there was all – the thing is, though, bagging in Madden 19 is not letting somebody get in the end zone. Like, three is three is fine. Like, I was giving him three. I was giving him check now. I wasn't going to let him – and I felt like that's what I did. Yeah, for and sure. And Ron, Ron Parker – and all that kept. Ron Parker played out his mind. I mean, I've been telling people all year Ron Parker been a goon since I, I was using the, uh, the most fair card for the longest. I thought he was he was an animal, honestly. I don't know. I mean, is that the card you had or you had the good one, the new one? I had 20. Yep, yep. that's the one. Yeah, the most fair one. Yeah, he's an animal. They give him that right. little, you give him that little gem so he get that one point of speed. Uh, that's all you need. That's, yeah, that's all he needed. Yeah, we're not talking like about said, this. Uh, this fumble with Fournette. I mean, yeah, I, I think it should happen more because, I mean, think about how often people go on aggressive inside the five-yard line, man. Like, it, it's pretty much automatic. And it's crazy. Right. It doesn't even really matter who your running back is. And that's one of the craziest things about it. Like, and, but that right. Fournette. And one thing about, man, see right there is like, damn, he can't fight right there. If he's on aggressive, he throws a toss and just he – every time he threw a toss and he ran into two people, your people really fought and brought him down. Because you know how mad is, man. If you – after you do that pick – if he go up seven nothing, that's a huge difference as opposed to going three nothing. And yeah. obviously, where well, you getting getting uh getting the fumble is huge. But I, I oh, just, definitely. I mean, dude. And then he went with it. I, sometimes you just question people play. What's crazy about Manuel is that he ran fullback dive from like the nine yard line on second and three, and he got like six yards on fullback dive. Yeah. Right. But then he went to toss. He went to a pass play out of goal line, and then he's gonna go to toss again. I mean, for mine, if I get six yards on fullback dive, I'm coming back. Listen, you're going to have to show me you can stop fullback dive. Right. 
and that's uh Lawrence Taylor. What Lawrence Taylor you got? That was fifty one cap. No, I mean that's and there you go. He that, that was one he of the biggest play. plays. Uh, something similar to like what happened to Mogan. I think Manu he had all the pressure. Like once again, he was the favorite to win. So like, I think down here he was pressing. You that's thought, all you it, thought, like, he, so, hold he time about, You thought Manu was favorite over you? Yeah, I I see. I'm telling you, I seen I seen it everywhere. I seen it everywhere. He was favored to win over me. I seen everybody betting against me. Like I seen, I seen it all. Like he was favored to win. I didn't see many people betting. Only people betting on me was people. Like that's it. The rest, of everybody else is betting against me. Jeez, see, I mean, like, so yeah. So I feel like that that helped out because it's like he has the pressure. I think he was feeling the pressure. He started yeah, and and it sucks. Just I talked about like for him to go up seven at the stop and he was huge, but for him to fumble is like all right. I got all the momentum. This was a man game is a is ebbs and flow of a man game, man. Sometimes your emotion, you real happy. Other times you upset. When your momentum is high, it feels great. And when you lose all that, it's like damn, that sucks. But right now, I feel like it, it, you do a pick, you let boy go right down the field, and then he was able to get the. Uh, get the um what's them called get the fumble or you, you were able to get the fumble get right back and you now you got the momentum. Right, yeah, the momentum definitely swing. It, it definitely, it definitely swung. Yeah, and what, like I gotta man. I always say after I see, I see Clef play a lot, man. If I'm playing Clef, I'm manning up both of them bunch guys because you're never gonna run a little hitch and a streak with with Pat Sale ever against me because that's that's been your play for two years in a row. Right, yeah, definitely, definitely one of my best plays. Oh, something yeah. I run the most. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, that's what he did a good job. Like sometimes you gotta give credit where Zoo Manu played great defense. Like, he played great defense. He mixed up his defense better than anybody I had played, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I, I, I thought, like I said, I thought he played a, a phenomenal first half. And to go, even, like, the, for this first quarter to be over, and if it be to be, uh, what's it called, if it be 0 0, it's like really like, damn. For as well as he played, he should at least have three points on the board, you know. But, I mean, uh, he got, you know, he got to do a better job capitalizing. Like I said, I thought the play call on the inside the 10 yard line. <laughs> After getting six yards on fullback dive, my fullback dive is getting the ball again probably three times. Exactly. And like I said, that's what gave me confidence because he outplayed me the whole first half, and mm-hmm. it wasn't even close. Like, he yeah. dominated the game. Yeah, but and for it, me to be in yep. that game, and then when I got the kick return, I'm up seven, and I got dominated? Like, I knew then. I- yeah, and that, that's, a, know, that's a rough feeling on the other half because you know when you're playing a good game and you know when somebody's bagged and when you're moving the ball. And for you to go through, have a, have a, you know, a game this well and then to go ahead and uh, be down, that's definitely a huge, uh, huge momentum swing. Exactly. It really, really helped in my favor. Oh, yeah, I think this is where you do this wild-ass playmaker pass. Yeah, this was dumb. My eyes wasn't working correctly. I, I don't know what. I don't know what was going on. What, what eyes? I think. Uh, oh, here we go. But he was like, you do. Right, was, he was. You was do right at him. Like he was using. I, I know. Board. What that had to do with eyes? That was just a decision. It ain't even. It ain't like it looked open. Oh no! I'll tell you, it's just one of them games. It's just one of them games. Even LeBron have games where he's like, man, is that really LeBron? That's really one of them games I was having. Like I just, it just was a bad offense. We just like this right here was just like the past. The pass right there was just dumb. The pick was just—it was just stupid. Like I said, I deserved to lose the game. I really deserved to lose that game. Yeah, that pass was wild. That was definitely—I mean, you was hoping for something. I mean, I ain't know what you was hoping for, but who knows? <laughs> but, and then look, then typical typical man player when they throw a pick, he comes back and blitzes seven at the person. See, I'm telling you guys, chat, you'll listen. Defensive calls are a lot in, in the, your mindset. Like you pissed, you do that dumbass pick. And what you gonna do when somebody pissed? They come out and raise blitz. I mean, you getting six right away. Boom. <laughs> Everybody does that. I'm telling you got chat. You guys gotta pay attention when you watch Mad Men. When people turn the ball over, do some dumb shit, or the game doesn't go right their way. If they fumble or anything, next play, I promise you, they're getting you're blitzing seven, what? you're blitzing six, just because you want to try to get that back. Like let me try to make that play real quick. What? I was like, yeah, he finna throw the pick. Yep. I'm right back to me. Next yeah, play. Exactly. I'm blitzing everybody. I'm blitzing everybody and I'm alert some <laughs> shit. No, he just do a high ball to this wide open receiver. Man. So nope. I was like, I'm watching this like damn Clef really laying down right now. Man, I'm thinking it's our thing. That's how and, and, and the people don't understand. You start thinking about stuff like that in the live event, like, damn, I'm really laying down. I'll be thinking like, damn, the, the chat killing me right now. This shit is bad. <laughs> you don't want to be that hey, person. I'll- 
I'm like, I'm not trying to go back to this player's lounge, man. I'm going to go. I'm going to walk right to the hotel. It, oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> my chair all breaking. Yeah. yeah I'm like, like, I'm not even going to this player's lounge and talking to anybody. Yeah. I mean, shoot. That's definitely uh definitely what you start thinking about, man. I got to walk back there. I do six picks. You know, that's definitely, definitely a rough feeling. Yep. It come that moment in the game where you talk to yourself. That, you give yourself that talk. You know what I'm saying? We ain't come this far. Okay. I, was, I know we've been playing bad, but let's turn this around. That's really what, what I had that talk with myself. So who are you having this talk with? You having this talk with Randy Moss and Michael Vick? Like, like we ain't come this far? Because I like to talk yeah. to my players. When they when they playing shitty, you got to talk to your players sometimes, man. I'm in my mind. I'm just thinking to myself. I'm really just thinking in my mind. You know what I'm saying? You got nothing to lose. Man. You got nothing to lose. What are you? What are you pressing for? Like, there's no point of being pressing out here. You got nothing to lose. You need to play loose. I would just play, just plan, plan tight. No, I see. I mean, but you know, I said we still in the game. No matter what, all this this terrible ass play, and you know, all this that and the third. And what what happens? How he don't get this third and three? Oh, he do. How much time was left when he kicked this ball? Wow, you really just. But even right here, seconds, I... like this is such a huge play for uh, third and inches. He on the six yard line and he ran toss and got bagged. That's what I mean about his Leonard Fournette. Like just didn't fight. Like his Leonard Fournette. Like if I'm Manu, because I'll tell you this, I remember it. Madden Challenge, the first or Madden Classic, whatever it was, Madden 17, the first live event, Madden 17. I played Evil Low, which we all know was joke. You know, if you ever play Evil Low in an online elimination. It's probably joke. Same thing with franchise. If you, if you guys ever play franchise in a single elimination online tournament, it's probably joke. So <laughs> joke pretty much played for every EMB member that live in, like, New York or New Jersey, whatever. He played for all of them in online elimination. So if the DC bracket, if you have to play an EMB member, it's probably going to be joke. But I remember I played joke, or I played Evil Low going into, uh, whatchamacallit, Going into that, that it was to get to group play. It was like round five. At that time, it was like 130 people in one tournament, and then it was like round five. I had, and I had Eddie Lacy, man. And the same thing happened to me. Like I had a fullback dive, halfback thing, whatever it may be, and he just didn't fight in the end zone. It, it, it cost me one. It cost me one trip where I went for it on fourth down, and it cost me kicking the field goal later. And you know, down here, man, if you don't get sevens or you go for it in fourth or you fumble and turn the ball over, it's going to change the game for you. And and for his Leonard Fournette to be this ass and not fight was huge. And then you got to look at your players, man. That Josh Jones really balled out and just breaking up passes, hit stick and tackling and really oh, not yeah. getting hit forward, man. And I yeah. mean, a lot of people use that Josh Jones. He's a great car. And, and Mano right there, you can tell, like, man, he's sick. Like, damn, I really uh, did all this, had a great half, and it's about to be Exactly. He was, he was moving the ball, but he just couldn't get in his own. And I will say this. I, credit, credit to – them books, man, because they coached up well on that. We got talk, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, that's one thing you not you're not going to run. Yeah, I mean, shit, I believe it. I see. I mean, he definitely, but even regardless, it was always people there. All you need is that one extra, uh, that one little bit of fight from Leonard Fournette, man. And, and right. You know, you definitely need just one time. It, it would have helped him out. Would have changed the game, and then you would get the kickoff. I don't know if he sky. Let me see this right here, because the sky kick, because. How do you not sky kick this? Like this, he kicked it was the ball to the four yard line. Oh, he did. It definitely was a little. No, but he, he the way he kicked it. If you look, look at it. Like what? Oh yeah, he kicked it super short. What was oh, that? Oh man, Chad? I never noticed that. Yeah, like I understand the win, but what is this? Yeah, I don't know what he. Is this a squib kick? Yeah. A scum kick? Is this a new version of something I don't know about, Chad? But this, this definitely, for him, for you to kick the ball to the. Uh, to the six, seven yard line, or wherever the hell you caught the ball. You caught, you caught the ball in like the three yard line, and then we all know, man. Once you get that edge, they, they hold them blocks. Like, oh, golly, them dudes were just over there mauling, and then it just, that was the easiest kick return I've seen in Madden in my whole life. Damn. Yeah, it was. It was pretty easy. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. when I was up seven three, I couldn't believe it because I knew I did not deserve to be. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, like, it was. Just, it was nobody out there. Nobody out there. Yeah, damn, after that, after after all that happens, man, it's really like you got all the momentum in the world, and the second half just you play a little bit better, honestly. All right. All right. That's when he started throwing picks. He started just, like I said, he started pressing. All them threes was hurting him. For sure. It was making him feel like he needed to score. For sure. Which he didn't because I wasn't scoring. Like, he really didn't need to score. 
because I mean I wasn't really scoring it. Was, it was in his head he, that mental that mental hurdle. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, because this is a tough as well as you play one. You already playing somebody that's tough, and then you play the great half and you losing. That that's crazy. That that's definitely a, a tough situation. Right. And, and talk about talk about this three three five defense. Why you like that so much? Because you run it a little bit different than Pavin did. Absolutely a lot, a lot different than they did. What, what do you like to do with this? Me, I like to really take advantage of, of the three wreck and the sheds. Like, that's what I really – coming into the tournament, I just like – I like to, I like manning people up more. Pavin was more – he was always sending people more, which, I mean, credit to him. He obviously found something that nobody else knew, whatever he was doing. He ran his differently than anybody else, but mine was more man using – and using spies like right there, Ron Parker. Well, this off. is crazy though. He shouldn't pick the chat. Like this was wild. You don't think he should have picked it? That's a little. That's a little bit wild for Tony Capper. That's a, it's a slight wild. I mean, I done seen Gabe Martin twelve caps pick up some pick off some wild stuff. Yeah, but they kind of throw it. This think, wasn't. I don't think he threw this at the spy as much as the spy made a play right here. I ain't think right. now. I ain't think sometimes when people throw picks to a spy, it's like, damn, that was a bad pass. But I felt like the spy just made a play. I thought it was a big right. difference between throwing it at the spy and the spy making a play. And I man, yeah. I've been I've been screaming around Parker all year, man. I, he's been a dog. And then man, after that, it's like, damn, I got a kick return and I do a pick six to a spy. Like like that's crazy. Like it, for for him to be losing because of that, he's held this, he's held you to no points. Got more picks than you have points, <laughs> and he's losing fourteen to three. That that hey, that's that that hurts. Losing four. That definitely hurts. Despite the best zone in the game, it's one of the best going zone. Like it, it it is a crazy zone. They do. And then, honestly, a lot of times, like, even there, you might not even see him because when you got a six foot player and he's so close to the line and there's not a fat guy, he's kind of like he almost hides. You know what I mean? And then you exactly not, that. Like I said, that pass was a little bit crazy. That was definitely a play, a play that the spy made. And then, now right. this is the hardest thing to do in Mad is when you're in a big game and now you're down two scores. Now because you know defensively, there's no pressure on me. Defense. If I'm up two scores, the defense is fun. Like I. I, I Defense, I would love to be on the defensive side of the ball when I'm up to the scores because I don't got to worry about you running inside zone. I don't got to worry about, you know, little drags and stuff. Exactly. I just got to – I know you're going to press and I know you're going to make a mistake. That's Defense is real easy when you up two scores, and offense is really hard. Right. And now pretty much I'm thinking, hey, no big plays. I, I gave up – like I said, I gave up a few big plays, but once you get up that much, if he scores, he got to draw the whole field and he got to choose. Yeah. And if you try to fill, you want to take you want to take fifteen to twenty seconds each play, right? And that's pretty much all you want. And I, I said this on the podcast. I said this on my videos right. many times, man. When you're winning, you want the game to go away as fast as possible. But when you're losing, you need to extend the game as long as you exactly. can, really. And I'm I'm on aggressive like every play here. Like I'm like, okay, he gonna have to take his time and fake hike me. Like I'm gonna sit on act. Like I'm just trying to make him use as much time as. Let's see you say all that, but then you just let him go down the field in two plays. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> he did. Man, I tend to do that to you sometimes. Yeah, because uh, the one thing about trips, man, you sit there and worried about all the crossing routes, that deep corner route, the little cute, and, and then everyone's, and then he just killing you with just seam passes there. You know what I mean? Right. It's not something you really, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to all the different uh, things you can worry about, seam passes aren't necessarily uh, right. the biggest thing you can give up, but that, they definitely hurt you there. And that's on my user, too, because that's the only thing I had to guard. That's just me being too aggressive, trying to guard, make a play that go lurking, lurking flats by the running back and stuff. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my responsibility. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but then and you get the ball back. When you're in a situation where you have 14 points, you just got in the field goal range, man. It's good because you know you're going to be up seven points regardless of pretty much what happens here. I mean, if you get stopped, you're still going to kick and go up seven points. But you also know if you score a touchdown, that, that'll put the game pretty much in the fridge. Right, right. Right here, I'm Dang. thinking pretty much like just don't play real good defense. He's pressing. I can live with three. I knew I could live with three. So I took a bad sack down here, I think. But fortunately, I had wins, so I could still make I still make the field goal. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely uh, taking a sack there is rough, but. 
Yeah, you got to know when you had a win and when you don't have a win, essentially, pretty much all the time. And, I, I I mean, I've watched games that I've played, and it's like, yo, <laughs> I think to myself, yo, I really had no idea <laughs> what the win was. I was just playing, you know, because <laughs> most of the time, like, like, I mean, I've said it a bunch of times, 99% of the games you play aren't serious Madden games. Really, really aren't. Even leaderboard games aren't that damn serious. Even, you know, $20 games aren't that damn serious as this is, you know, and you'll never be uh, as prepared playing, you know, pick up games as you are in, in this situation. Exactly. And that's why all the games are low scoring. Like, everybody was saying how hard defense was, but nobody really. Yeah, defense was, the, I mean, yeah, because one, people are going to use the clock more. People want to take some shorter things. People want to play more cautious. They're going to play closer to the vest because they don't want to make that huge mistake. So scores are definitely going to be a, a little bit, you know, tighter than they are if you're just playing right. a, a pickup game, really. So Exactly. You're not as loose. You're not just throwing – Anything. Which in this game, you really need to. Sometimes you just need to throw a high pass. Oh, hell I mean, yeah. I see. As the I'm, game went on, I mean, I don't know if it was like that in the beginning of the year. I feel like it wasn't. But then it, as, as it goes to the same thing, like, were people really chucking the ball high early in the year? Or was that something that people just started doing a month ago? You know what I mean? I, I don't know if the game was that crazy right. all year or it was, uh, you know what I mean? I just don't know when the high pass really became this dominant. The craziest thing, it came dominant when they turned down. They said they turned down at- one patch, they said, okay, Axe have been decreased by, like, 60%. Something wild like that. And Axe were worse after that than they ever been. So, I don't know what they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, it's definitely been a little bit different. Especially, maybe it goes to all the cards they're putting in the game. You know, they obviously put a great Moss. That's Julio Jones. Just better right. better wide receivers in the game. You know, maybe making it better. But, obviously, the game has definitely, uh, definitely changed throughout the year and it's been like that for the last couple of years man the game transforms throughout the year like uh, one month or one part one man tournament is going to be a different meta than there is at the end of the year and it's definitely uh something high ball that was definitely crazy during this tournament and i noticed it's it's all the way you know what you should be doing on draft champions oh yeah it's even worse on draft champions. i mean if you're not throwing high pass to be honest yeah, you definitely got mixing mix in a little high pass here and there, man. Even a little Tyree Hill little ass. He, he comes down and still catches those little curls in traffic. Yeah, it, it's it's changed the game. It really has. Because at the beginning of the year, a lot of people didn't have offense. Super hard to score. But then once they turned up the ass, I mean, it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah, for sure. And talk about playing defense here. I, I feel like when you have seven, it's like five minutes left. You're in a good spot because – one, you can play real safe defensively. Like, I, me personally, I would play super safe. I would make him, you know, take time. Even if he scores a touchdown, I'll have a ball to close it out. And uh, right. it's definitely all the pressure on him because when if I'm playing offense, I'm looking at the clock like this is probably my last drive. You know, I definitely have to get some type of points here. I definitely probably need to get seven because I'm going to take a minute, to, you know, two, two minutes to score. And that's going to allow him to milk the clock out. So, for me personally, I'm going to uh, be pressing a little bit on offense. So, defensively, I'd be cool. I'd be cool sitting back, allowing him to go ahead and get a couple yards, just not which I'm not trying to, uh, you know, let him score quick. And then he goes for the high ball. He throws right at Ron Parker again. Right. I was really that, – that was my mindset. I was chilling. I'm like, he can take a ball at a time. If he scores, it's whatever. I'll get the ball back like two minutes left, and I got the last possession. I'm going to milk and get three. That was my whole mindset right there. And then, unfortunately, Ron Parker made a play. I mean, he threw right down him. Yeah, Ron Parker. I mean, so Ron Parker had two picks this game pretty much by himself. The spy, and then I, I don't know if that was a three-rack or a, a vert hook, whatever it may be, he come up with a another big play for you. And now it's pretty much if I get a field goal, the game's over. Right. Yeah, at that point, I knew – at that point, I really knew, like, but I'm, I'm milking. I'm milking all this clock. And I don't, I don't think he touched the ball again. I think that was it. I got went down there and got a first down with Vic and pretty much sealed the game. Yeah, well, after you do the corner route, it was like, yeah, this is cooked. Yeah, he didn't. He just smoked that whole clock out. That I mean, and as as much as I talk about the driving overtime versus mode, this and when you look back at this drive, after getting the ball back with with four minutes left and and having to go down the field, score a touchdown and you wind up just ending the whole game, I mean, that's got to be just as impressive as a as a touchdown drive, really, to take the Definitely. whole damn game out of there and just end perfectly. But like I said, man, if he got better play out of his running back, if he got better, uh, obviously, the, the two picks to Ron Parker were killer. And then, you know, 
definitely. But, man, right. that's what you got to do. You got to just take advantage right. of the game situation. No matter how you got in that game situation, you got to take advantage, and that's what you did, man. So, yeah, win by all costs sometimes. You sometimes you just got to – ain't no such thing as an ugly win, so – Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and like you said, yeah, I remember you said in an interview that, you know, this is uh pretty much it's nice to be able to win playing bad. You know, that was a big deal. And and obviously, if we, we can sit here and talk about all these wins, man. We got to talk about this ghost game. We got to talk about what happened because, uh, I mean, all, all we heard was that you was 25-0 and 0 versus ghost. And me, I think ghost is an elite player. I really I think ghost is good. But I think Ghost is, is fragile in the mind. He like he like I always bring up Joel. Like I would always bet on Joel versus Ghost. Like no matter be just because especially in right. person. In person I would always bet Joel versus Ghost. Always. Like I don't think Joel is right. half the player that Ghost is at Madden. But if you put them two in person, I think he will always lose to somebody like that. And I, f- I feel like you in the same mold. So I thought if somebody had a chance to to beat Ghost, I thought you had a, a, as good a chance to beat Ghost as anybody else in the tournament. Most definitely. And that's why I said that. I know how Ghost is, and I know, like, you can get in his head. So that's why I put it out. It can work against you, or it can work for you, depending on how you look at it. I'm like, it ain't no pressure on me. I'm going to put it out, out there that he's never beat me, and I'm going to let him think. So that was my mindset going in. And I played – this is probably my best game of offense. I didn't make one bad read. I threw the ball away pretty much every time. I really improved from the Manu game. It's just a few plays here and there that I just didn't make. Sometimes that. Sometimes the better player don't win that day. That's pro- that's how I felt like that game was. The better player didn't win, but it happens. Sometimes the better. T- so it just it, it is what it is. It comes with the game. Yeah, I mean, what what do you think the biggest play of this game was? Like, what happened to, to prevent you from winning this game? I think the play to Tyreek was the biggest. That was the biggest one. I mean, the block field goal. I still had a chance after that. Like, I knew I get the ball. I I can make a money. But I think that that play to Tyreek kind of shifted everything. Because instead of getting, yeah, because now now instead of me being up, up, I think I was either down or we were tied up. Something I, I don't I know I we was either tied up or I was down. I haven't watched this game too much. So it's really I don't feel like I did a lot wrong this game. Well, one, I don't feel like I made that many mistakes. So this Compton don't have this game on YouTube. So Compton, what's up, man? This is a good game. Against two of the best players, man. You got to get this one up on YouTube. Get them views because I'm actually on the, the Twitch site right now. And it's tough to, to scroll through this one. It's seven hours long. But the one thing I did say about Ghost, man, the one thing that I thought he would have a good advantage is he scores inside the five-yard line all the time with this near and far shit. Because I feel like it's so much better than it was last year, honestly. But that, Yeah, that, he did a good job of finding that. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously we all used it last year because everybody ran West Coast last year. And, uh... We all used it last year, but this year it's just so much better. And I really thought, damn, Ghost got a good chance because he can consistently score touchdowns here inside the inside the uh, ten yard line. Right, it was hard to blow that up. That was that was it was a good find by him. Good good scheme to to find that. It was yeah. I'm trying to find this tire. Oh, like geez. I said, just a few plays. I took three, and he got seven. That's what really changed it. Like I like. The, how Tyreek Hill play was just that was big to uh, me. That was Moss, the biggest play. Uh, again. What's the Tyreek? It was. It looked like it was Moss that dropped. Oh, that Moss, Moss. It was Moss. Moss. Man, Moss, Moss dropped it. Was that. Moss, Moss, Moss. I understand. Moss. I mean, see, I see. For me, Tyreek Hill dropping stuff like, obviously, he's a he's one of the best players in Madden, if not the best. Obviously, on race, but one thing he's not gonna do is his catching traffic ain't crazy. So when he drop passes, right. it's like, uh, I mean, sometimes you gotta live with that with him. But for Moss to drop this. And he was so far away. That's what killed me. Like, he John was. Ramsey. Well, talk about the – you definitely possession caught it right there. Right. I feel like if you uh, – you you have all the space in the world. It's about how far away he was. I feel like if you rat catch this this pass, uh, I mean, uh, he goes nowhere near it. I think the possession caught might have slowed him down. But obviously, you possession catch it because he is that wide open and you just want to secure it. Like, it makes sense to, like right. – if you're that wide open, possession catch it, ball up, fall on the ground. Like, you know, it, it, right. all you got to do is secure the catch. But, man, it's weird, man. It's like, okay, because you possession caught it, now it's going to give you an animation, which should be a, a safer animation to catch the ball. But in turn, it turned out to be an animation that allowed Jalen Ramsey to get over there and knock the ball out. This definitely was a a crazy play in the game that, uh, that changed it. Right. Looking back on it, I should have probably racked it or, or, or aggressive caught it. The only thing I was – thinking like sometimes when you 
sometimes it, the ball will go through his hands. So I'm thinking, hey, he's oh, yeah. so far away. Let me just let me just possession catch and get down because I didn't think he would. Re- Looking back on it, I should have wrapped it. Yeah, I should have wrapped. And then, that's then, why I really don't say I got cheated like that. I say I had some unfortunate plays. Yeah, because I, I probably, a, a, as much as it was a crazy play, uh, that that type of stuff does happen. Like they do get in the last second. Right. I would have did the same thing. I would have just clicked on, and tried to RB and hope because he got dotted that play. Really, he got dotted and uh. I mean, because that's the only thing he could have did. And sometimes you get the fluky and the ball comes out like that, and it's definitely uh, unfortunate. But, yeah, that changed the game because now it's 14 to 10. The next play, you don't get it. And I don't know if goes to go down here and score points, but he definitely looked like he's going to get three because he's in field goal range. I don't really remember. Like I said, Compton does not have this game on YouTube, so it's a little bit tougher to watch. Yeah, so he went down, right. went up seven. Uh, you got to get points before the half here. You got to right. try to fight and get something. Right, he we went. It was it was really good about him. I mean, like I said, you can't fault him for making a play. He did a good job, and he he did a good job on offense. He ain't really made. He did make a few bad reads. Now he made. Let me take that back. He made a few bad reads that like they didn't let me pick off. But he played smart for the most part. He played real good, good defense for him not to be a defensive player. He played. He made me. Yeah, I mean, shoot, goals. Ghost has definitely gotten better on defense in the last – I mean, obviously last year defense was ev- easy for everybody with the, um, you know, with 91 zone and the 3-3-5 three, three, aggressive, which seems like it's all the way back. But uh, so you got, you got to come down here and get, get three. Right. All right, right so window. then you get the ball. I believe you get the ball. Let me see. Yeah, I yeah. got the ball. So this definitely was probably one of the more underrated games of the tournament. Now that I'm looking at it, shoot. Yeah, it was definitely a back and forth game, and it was it was a close game. I mean, it was a real good game. Oh, I thought you was about that. That see, see, you use the running back wheel a little bit more than most people, man. The running back wheel is yeah, definitely I, something you go to a lot more than most bunch of users. Right. I try to pick up. I really don't base my bunch off anything. I try how somebody's playing me. So when they like leaving that side solo, with me, oh yeah. It's like a deep. I like to. I like to use that version. It all depends who I'm playing. That's how I just. No, you got. You got. You got to make them respect that flat over there, especially when you get the ball to Ricky or your running back, whoever it may be, because they make that first person miss and it, it turns into a, a lot bigger play. Exactly. Man. But yeah, I mean, I don't think you turn the ball over. You don't turn the ball over. Or you settle for another three. What the hell did it happen? I settle for three here again. Yeah. I know getting three out of this. Should have threw that. I had Shannon and Shark wide open. I should have threw that early. Ended up hitting Moss, though. Got a first. Like I said, and that's another thing. Coming into the tournament, I did, like, these games are going to come down to taking three and getting seven. I told Skimbo that. Mm-hmm. I Sometimes I took three and not got, like, I knew. Like, when you take three, playing against a good offensive player, you're risking losing that game. If they, and even with the unfortunate plays, you can't fault that man because he got seven. Like, he was getting. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, it's like, you got to, you still got to kick him. You know, you can't put the whole game on the one play. You know, like, have you went for that? You're just pretty much putting the whole game on a fourth and eight. You know, and I feel exactly. like you got to just keep yourself alive, keep kicking. Hopefully you come down here holding the three at some point and then you get right. the ball back for the win. You always got to stay alive as long as possible in yep. a bad game. I should, and that's know. what I focus on the most, just not getting tilted, like just staying calm and collective. Like I knew even when it, he went down there and got three, it was 16 to 20. I knew getting the ball back, I got a chance to still win the game. Like It's going to come down to my offense. Like, what more can you ask for when you got control of the situation? So you get the ball back. I'm assuming unless Ghost go for this wild ass fourth down, which he should. He goes for it. He should probably boot it. He said he didn't want me clocking him. Oh, it's so much time in five minute quarter game. I I, don't, I ain't mad at him going for this either. But I don't know what the hell he do. He threw a. I want to say he threw. He threw a high ball to Jerry Rice. Just trying to see what could happen. I, I don't blame him for going for it either. I don't. Well, I probably would have did the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I ain't mad at it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but as we see what a lot of these kids do, and I noticed, um, I want to say I noticed Joe Rice doing this first in the Met when his tournament in the Texans. 
was using PA Post because of play action block. They, I, I guess they assume that play action blocks these shed defenses a little bit better than right for some reason. Uh, yeah, it and, worked better. Uh, yeah, so I see them going to that a lot, and that's what he went to there. And he he didn't have the time he wanted to, but obviously you get to a four from sixteen, you gotta. You got to red dial up the pressure in that situation, and that's what you got to do. So now you get the ball back, you down one point. I mean, you got to this is this is score a touchdown, and I'm I'm feeling good. Right. Yeah. This score a touchdown, and yeah, like you said, you gonna feel you gonna feel great because he like as much as he was driving. Once I like his first two drives were easy. He went down and scored two touchdowns, went right. Up. But after I started switching things up, I mean, things changed. I was like the second half, I was playing a lot better defense. So. If I score, I felt like the game was over. For sure. Even getting three, I felt like, hey, he can go down there and get three. I'm still going to have time to get Mm -hmm. But like I said, you have 16 points, so you already kicked three field goals, which is pretty much prevent you from having a big lead in this game, really. Right, exactly. Yeah, it it definitely is. It definitely is. So, uh, I mean – you definitely are going to are going to kick the field goal if you come to a fourth down. I mean, I don't think there's any chance that you go for it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like when you get this close, it's hard to get a fourth down. You know what I mean? Like when you get that close to the end zone, it's not right. that much harder. Def- so for me, I, I I would probably kick it most definitely, and then uh, try to play super aggressive on defense. But anyway, you got first and goal on the four yard line. Now, talk about the one thing that I I do. Applaud Kiv and 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 Wesley and them, but probably Kiv. I feel like Kiv come up with all their stuff. As they did have a cute little red zone, uh, that like that that three tight end set where they could run a dive or throw the little high ball over there to Moss. I feel like so many people and, and here you coming out with something similar to that. Like so many people just stay in the bunch or his goal line. There's no like inside the ten offense anymore. I talk about like w- what you try to do inside the ten. Right, basically. Once I get inside the 10, if I, I'm still at, like, the 10, I'll stay in bunch because I got the little Pat Sill, which is a, it's a good play. But once I get inside that five, that's when I really try to get out of bunch, and that's when I try to pound it and, then, uh, and come out in this and see what I can do. Really, just that was a good play by Jamal Adams. If he don't make that play, I can get in. Now, we said, what's up about Fournette, man? You're Ricky. What Ricky are you, run, are you rocking right there? 48 cap, it really was, like, I shouldn't even have had him. Looking, like, looking back on I had a lot of my team. I should have orchestrated my team a different way because, I mean, I had Ricky, and he wasn't doing nothing for all that cap. Yeah, but for me, and obviously you got your field goal block, but for me, as far as a running back is concerned, I've always been a, a component of having a great running back in these tournament games. When I won, Ricky Williams – he dominated for me. Like, he was an absolute stud. So, I mean, I, I, I will never – even somebody that's not a passer or not a runner, like, I don't really run. And I tell Skimbo, he always had a shitty running back. And it's like, dude, sometimes, like, inside this five here, man, that's when they got to make their money, really. Even if you don't give them the ball the whole game, it's worth it to have somebody that's going to just bowling ball inside the five-yard line here. Right. And that was my whole process of having him. I knew we specifically for red zone situations, goal line situations, because I ain't want somebody there who – that's that's the only reason I had him. Yeah. Now, like like I said, now you you definitely gotta kick the field goal fast, like because, I mean, you you're in a tough spot right here because, I mean, you're gonna kick the ball off and it's like he has the whole field to milk. So, exactly. So really, the the five or six seconds you save by kicking the field goal really that fast, in hindsight, it really didn't matter that much, you know, because like because you're in a tough, you're gonna have to play defense either way. Right. And getting a field goal block definitely sucks. But, I mean, the one thing about field goal blocks, it's not as bad as it was two years ago. So it's not as bad as it was last year. There's so, so many more things you can do to avoid, uh, you know what I mean, the field goal block. And yeah. Like I said, you was just in a tough spot because of kicking so many threes that you had to rush. And, and goals, I mean, right. goals, honestly, that's a good play about goals, knowing that you had to rush and get rid of the ball. And right there, I mean, when you pick the first play, he chucks a high ball drag to Moss. Right. My whole mindset was like, okay, I'm going to kick this field goal. I'm going to make it. And then I'm going to get aggressive on defense so we can't oh, yeah. drive the ball. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to let him get inside the field goal. Well, how did but it... like I said, should have had a pick right there. That should have been a pick. Oh, yeah, that was looking a little – that was definitely looking scary. But how do you wind up getting all the way down the field? Deep past the moss. Yeah, he caught I... me in pump. Oh. 
in Palms coverage? Yeah, he called me in cover four Palms. I was in a match, and I had him. I shouldn't have pressed him. I had him pressed up, which is which was bad by me. Yeah, so then he just mans up, and then, oh, oh he let that bad. Throw, uh, but at the end of the day, right now, you're like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to get the ball back. Right. Yeah, Man. I knew I was going to get the ball back. I knew After I still had a chance. Catch, I think I'm going to get the ball back regardless. Right. And that's why I wasn't really I wasn't really tripping on finally. I knew I was going to get it back. So we get the ball back. I mean, I mean, as, this isn't an impossible situation at all, needing a touchdown. You, I mean, I feel like you got a lot of time, a minute 20, a minute 30, and you got a timeout. I mean, I feel like you could really make a play. I was diff. But at the same time, I would take this, this situation on defense every single time. Being up four on defense is – like I tell you about being up seven is powerful, being up two score. Being up four in this situation is, like, relaxing. I feel I feel super confident. I don't care who I'm playing as long as I can hold you out of the end zone because any any type of, you know, play inbounds or something like that right here is huge. Right, and now you got to give – like, you're thinking he got to get a touchdown, so you're not tripping on him. No, you're not – you're really not tripping on anything because it's just – I feel like sometimes it's just as hard to get a touchdown inside the 10 as it is from the 50-yard line, dude. So it's like oh, yeah. no matter where you are, it's like, you know, I still had that goal line to protect me for the most part. Right. You still got a lot of – you got a lot of time to work with too. Like you – the clock is in your favor. But good drive by me. Good, good final drive by me. Uh, probably should have got out of bounds on one of those Shannon Sharp flat pass. Probably threw him too early. Oh, yeah. So that, I that that changed, now man. I remember when you you drawed. That changed again. Yeah, you you went a little crazy with the flat pass. Because, like, this is – in a situation like this, stopping the clock is more important than 10 yards. Yeah. You know, there's really yeah, no – Like, obviously, like, you throw this, this the tight end wheel, you get 15 yards – it's kind of worth it to get 15 yards if you want the clock run, you know. But if you're going, if you're going to change, a flat pass can get you four yards, or if you chuck somebody to get you 14. Now it's really not right. worth to get trying to get 14 if if you risk keeping the clock run, especially because I'm thinking 44 seconds you're on a 28 yard line. You're you. Well, this is what I call Randy Moss territory, where you can you can win the game with Randy Moss just throwing the ball up or something. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I should have did. I, I mean, he was really it really was done by ghost. The dude was clicking on and lurking the. F- Going back and watching it, I'm like, he really did that. But see, that's me not being all. I should have been more like then. I still recognize that because I had the high pass while the post. Yeah, I. Well, Ghost is here because he lurked too high, too flat. That's the only reason I felt like he won both games is because he yeah. lurked those lurked those passes. I feel like Figgy, Figgy played him really tough, and then Journey played him tough, and them two lurks in the flat were crazy, honestly. But uh, they were the reason why he he went ahead and and, and won both of his games. Yes. Yeah, but that Nothing. this first one you got a bad animation, like you know that catch, that spinning catch where they can't get upfield. You can't even go out of bounds. They just like pretty much set you up for a hit stick. So that was right. a tough animation on that one. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. There's a few a bad break. Yeah, that, I mean, and then another one. I mean, you just got kind of a bad animation again. But for me, it's like what. I guess it's worth because a flat pass in a situation. I guess if you truck them, you won't get. 10 yards, but for the most part, it's like you cost yourself having three throws into the end zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Like, if you look, if I just wait a second and throw that high pass the most, I mean, I win that. Oh, so it's just... you get the overthrow? Yeah, that, I mean. And then this last play was a real, it really was a, a, a laser. It was, Man. but the thing is, you ain't expected to get open like that. So you uh-uh, eyeballed I it. And I, I mean, I shoot. Did. Ooh, if I just low pass that, that might be a throw. Might... If you just throw it, you win again. But like I said, while the play was going down, you ain't expected to get that open. So you want to sit on the uh, you want to sit on the high ball because you want to get right. that one hand catch really. Right, and I see him behind him. I'm like, okay, if I hop pass, if he just made the throw, I feel like it was a touchdown. Yeah, but the, the, like, just some two flat passes, just a, I kind of bad animations. But at the same time, it's like, why? Like, it's not even it worth wasn't getting worth those 40 it. yards or getting those eight yards, you know? Yeah, it wasn't worth it. That's pretty much it. Wasn't, where, it wasn't uh, worth it. And then so, here but, it's like, you, you're doing hot routes. It's like, I got two plays. I might have just chucked something in the end zone. 
Right. That's, yeah. And that's probably what I said. And then recollect them yeah. thoughts. Chuck Same. something, that's, and if it don't work, you got one play rather right. than rushing. But, yeah, that's right. definitely uh, – definitely that. Honestly, watching that game, that was one of the better games of the, the, the tournament. I, that was the first time I watched it back. And uh, – but, right. like I said, field goals, that's the difference in the game. You wound up with, what, 16 points? 16 Total, points, yeah. yeah. 16. That was, you just scored one touchdown with, with five or six drives. Yep. That's definitely the, the difference in the game. But, you know, that's pretty much – as much as we uh, talk about that, uh, that's what this D.C. tournament is going to come down. So, talk, I want to know before, after all this, obviously, that seemed like you made a good enough run to kind of get you in a good position to make the Madden Bowl. You went to the Madden Classic. You probably got, what you get, like the final, what, 32 of Madden Classic, something like that? Uh, Yeah, I got Madden Okay. So, you got points for that. You made a good enough run here. So, you're sitting good with points so far for the year. So, so that's got to be feel good. Talk about that and talk about your mindset going into this draft champions tournament. Yeah, so, I mean, it feel good to be, like I said, I wish I would have just got a auto qualifier. Oh, then yeah. I wouldn't even have to, like, rely on draft. It works out great because going into draft champs, I mean, I'm one of the, I'm one of the best on the draft champs. Okay. Like, I've been, I've pretty much been lurking, lurking everybody, you know what I'm saying, playing them, playing against the best players while they, and I've been beating a lot of people, so I feel I feel great going. Yeah. Okay. So what what type of run do you think would secure you making the man bowl points wise? Do you want to get win like get to the third round, fourth round? Where's where's obviously your your goal is to you know make the live event and then just go on from there. But like right. I know at the end of the day you're thinking about points. So I want to get to the, the last event. So where do you think it would be a good number of points for you to secure your spot into the man bowl? From what I'm. From what I was told, and from what the, like, uh, they was telling me, if I just get out of groups, I mean, if I make it to groups, if I get oh, out yeah. of like the first single and limo, then I have enough. Uh, and I will uh, tell you that you you Xbox, right? Yeah, I'm Xbox. I will tell you, man, Xbox is super sweet, man. It really is. I I, I feel like everybody's on PlayStation, and, and it's kind of wild, essentially. And then like. To me, what's wild is Kiv will have his whole squad, but they are all on PlayStation other than, than Joe Rice. And it's like, if I had six people, right, and we a squad of six people, we doing three and three. That's what we're going to do. Like, I, I wouldn't put five people on one system and put one person on another system. And then right. the same thing with Joke and Ghost are both on PlayStation. You know, if I'm the two best players in my, in my squad, we're going to split systems pretty much. Right. You know, I don't I, – I, mean, I feel like everybody is on PlayStation – PlayStation is super top heavy, so I mean, yeah. as far as Xbox, I'm saying that you and Journey, I can't. And, I mean, I guess Carrie's on Xbox. He's always he's always a tough draft champions player. I don't know where Hollywood. I know he's lurking somewhere, and uh, so I, I I really gotta look at the Xbox leaderboard and see where it's at and see what the other top names are in the Xbox leaderboard. But I really think Xbox is going. You want to have a good chance to to make a nice little run and secure that man bowl championship. But ultimately, man, especially when you get into good player versus good player, it's going to come down to who got Tyreek Hill and who's stuck with, you know, with Will Fuller, you know, and who who, <laughs> who has Donovan McNabb or somebody with 85 speed and who has the slower quarterback. And, and just, I mean, a lot of that comes down to uh, team and, and playbook too, man. But you got to be able to freestyle. You got to be able to make some things work with uh, yep. what you have. And, and honestly, I think it is a, it, it is a test of, of a good man player. I mean, I like the mode. A lot of people hate it. I do think it's a little bit uh a little bit on the all proish side. But right. I mean I mean I do I do like the more it's gonna be interesting to watch. So uh I'm excited to watch you go ahead and, and try to make this run. And uh like I said, is there anything else you wanna talk about? Nah, I just appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to take it and run with it and like, like I said, it's time to keep growing and appreciate all the support. But does and all the advice, and mm -hmm. even before, like, even before, like, me, the game, and talks, even before that, yeah. W was always giving me advice on what to do. Even last year, was always coming to me, hey, young boy, move this way, like, telling me, just giving me little tips, and I appreciate it. A lot of people not really trying to make it, you know what I'm saying? People just want them at the top, be, and yeah. they'll be trying to bring people up with them, so I really, I respect yeah, for sure, because at the end of the day, man, it, the the more people that succeed, the bigger the whole game succeeds. You know, it's not always just about me. 
because, I mean, one person is limited. In a game, Madden is so small to begin with, and it's such a small community, man. So we, if we all eat, say, say Clef, I mean, obviously we probably all have the same viewers on Twitch. You know, but if you got 10 more viewers that I don't, you know, that's going to add 10 people to Twitch that I don't. You know what I mean? And that's how I always feel about anybody on Twitch. You know, if you're bringing, you know, 100 different people to Madden, it's a positive thing for everybody, you know. And, and shoot, I, it's money for everybody in Madden. It really is. It's money for everybody right. in video games. And, and and if you're trying and, – and it just comes down to being a person that just wants to see – like I said, see everybody eat. There's, there's plenty for right. everybody, you know, and, and we're going to get to it for real. But, uh, yeah, the draft champions, I'm ready to watch. I don't know the official bracket. We don't know because if people got to reply to their emails. People got to, you know, there's probably five. Some people like Jacoby has seven ca- accounts in Weekend League and stuff. So we really don't know who the bracket is. So hopefully by next week we had a bracket because the, the single elimination is not till next Thursday. So we have like a week and a half to prepare. So all you guys get ready, get, get looking through your playbooks, knowing what players you want to draft, and it's definitely going to be fun. But like I said, I appreciate all you guys that are in the Twitch chat, coming through watching the podcast, man. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button and comment. I want to get this this podcast to 100 likes, man. I know the podcast don't get as many views as the as the gameplay because they are hour and a half, two hours long. But man, if you guys are checking them out on YouTube, I really appreciate it. So make sure you hit the hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All Clef's links are below to all his social medias. All his YouTube, all his Twitch, you guys can check him out there. So make sure you check out the description of his YouTube channel. All that stuff will be there. Once again, Clef, I appreciate you guys, you being here. And I appreciate all you guys watching at home and watching on YouTube. This was Needed Podcast Episode 17. I'm out of here.